that is great. I mean, you know, how many? You know, you we've got a, we've got Mike Pence is out, obviously. Um, he's he's out. Yeah, this, uh, Tim Scott's out. The governor of North Dakota's out. Who was a cool guy, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, so so this will be Nikki and DeSantis, Chris Christie, and Vivek. Okay. So it'll be four. Um, <clears throat> it's probably the last debate they're going to have. Yeah. Uh, because the primaries start right after January. So, um, you know, it, it's going to be an all or nothing kind of thing. They've got to figure out a way to make a closing argument because it's, it's the last national stage that they'll have. Um, and, you know, they've got to make a closing argument as to why they're an alternative or, um, you know, like I said in the beginning, that they are the one that should be ready, should, you know, the leader blow a tire or, or you know, get get pulled over for speeding and arrested. I don't know. Um, you know, but that's the thing is, is at this point, you know, I don't even think any of them are jockeying for VP. I mean, I don't see any of them, you know, I mean, the only one I saw on that stage before from the very beginning that had the potential to be a VP was Tim Scott. Um, and I still think he does, but certainly none of these four that are left are VP candidates. So their yeah. only thing is, you know, I'm the one that you should turn to if, you know, Trump falters somewhere in the legal process. Well, you got and Vivek. He can't who's, be the nominee. Well, you got Vivek, who's who's a Trump supporter. I mean, he seems to be the biggest right. Trump supporter there. You got right. Chris Christie, who's there. It's like, I'm here. I'm here to tell you about Trump. And then I think you've got um, Nikki Haley and DeSantis, who are there. It's like, I sh we should, you know, each one of right. us should be the nominee. Right. Oh. I, I think that's exactly right. I think Vivek is there to, to provide cover. Uh, I think he started out that doing a good job of that. I think he's now become, uh, as will happen in politics, all about himself. And, uh, you know, it's turned people off. Um, I don't think he has the same like ability or stature that he had when he started this process. Um, Christie, you know, obviously he, he makes and he makes no bones about it. You know, he's in there for yeah. that. And I think both Nikki and, and DeSantis are the ones that are making the argument um, you know, we're true conservatives. Um, both of them are. They're, they're conservative. And, you know, they're making the argument that they would make a better candidate against Joe Biden than Donald Trump would. So far, nobody's, bu not nobody, but people aren't buying it to the extent that they need them to. I mean, the big story I saw today was that Nikki Haley's gaining ground in the primary in South Carolina. Yeah. Uh, she's from South Carolina and was an amazing governor in South Carolina for two terms. I mean, she was a, a dynamite governor in South Carolina. The fact that she's making progress in South Carolina is news. I mean, I'm not sure that's good news. Right. <clears throat> so, you know, they, again, it's it's the reality of they want to be the ones ready to fill the void um, or, you know, take advantage if there's the stumble. And... Uh, the, but but none of those four, I I do not see being a, a VP nominee. What's ironic is you know none of them, along with the other side. I mean we could get to this point in time in spring of next year or the summer of next year, where you know it's not Trump and it's not Biden and it's not Harris and it's. Not any of the the three that are up there right now, so or four that are up there right now. It's it's still, it's either going to be a very simple straight path, or it's going to be a big frittata, as we call it in Italian, which is a bunch of broken eggs and it's a big mess. One of the two, stable and strong, frittata. I bet frittata. <laughs> Always well, you go know, with the frittata. Uh, Mike, one of the things that. Uh... In this discussion that we're having as to you know this this uh bunch of broken eggs that you know that has become our primary primary right now there was an article in the washington post um about a week and a half ago and it was from the one of the deputy editors for the washington post and the title was basically the only one who can beat donald trump is and he goes dwayne johnson the rock 
and he was making he was making an argument that Dwayne Johnson should consider running for president uh, because and and in, in his argument he's saying um, and I'll and I'll make sure I put I put the the uh, the link to the article in the in the comments um, in the description and he was basically saying that the Super Bowl is something that everyone knows Super Bowl ev- everywhere people turn it on they watch it. And he's like, who's what's bigger than the Super Bowl? And his thing is, the Rock is bigger than the Super Bowl. And he says, you know, he's uh, he's he's been a successful businessman. Everyone knows him. He's got great charisma. He's got a lot of friends in different places, and and he also's got you know a, quite a bit of money. And he understands how to work the media. He understands that whole game. And can you know? And he should he should think consider running for president because he's the only one who can beat Donald Trump. Um, and I was I was. Thinking about this as, you know, this about a week ago, we had the um, anniversary for the 20, 20 year anniversary of the recall. And uh, I got, you know, go to lunch and over we with uh, Schwarzenegger. And as he's up there talking, you know, he's talk there. He's being interviewed and they're talking about how many times he has had to recreate himself. You know, how many times he's had to re- remake himself. And one of the areas that he's had to recreate, remake himself is when he ran for office. Mm-hmm. You know, he ran for office blowing, you know, I'm going to blow up the boxes and everything else. And eventually the teachers, the teachers union and nurses and everything else blew up his box, you know, and he was, he was out there not very popular for a while. He's having to deal with deficits. He's had to deal with cuts, but he's also had to deal with, you know, a democratic majority that just was tearing him up every opportunity they got. Right. And after he left the governor's office, he ended up having to recreate himself. And as I was talking to a couple of friends about this Washington Post article, I'm like, you know, I don't think people really understand how difficult it is to run for office. The amount of not just the time and money spent, but the amount of people that are that the opposition has that will comb through every single bit of information, every single bit of data every interview just to figure out what to hit you over the head with and the, here's the problem with the, the you're right and and this was one of the problems that that arnold faced arnold was successful because people liked him as an actor he was great he he is still is a great actor i mean and and he's accomplished in many different fields like the rock um the problem you have is when you're in politics, it doesn't matter. People will not, people will hate you because of who you are and what you stand for. And it probably is kind of tough when you're in a business that thrives on your success or people liking you to achieve that success, that box office success, when all of a sudden you have a segment of the population that really hates you because of what you believe and what you're trying to do. That is a difficult thing for someone, you know, anyone to to understand and absorb and deal with. I think that was one of the things. I mean, The Rock is a lot like Arnold in the sense of, um, you know, he is, he crosses party lines. He's been successful in many different, you know, assets and and functions of business. Um, He's very popular. I, I think, I think he'd be a great candidate. I just think the the issue is going to be, um, I don't <clears throat> I don't necessarily agree that he's the only person that could be Donald Trump. Okay, let's just be clear about that. Um, but I think he'd be. I mean, I think ultimately or eventually he'd be a great candidate. But the way Arnold was able to do it, capture that lightning in a bottle the way he did, you know, on a recall, doing it at the last minute, before anybody could catch their breath about it. He's already 15 lengths ahead of everybody. You know, he goes to file his papers down in Norwalk and, you know, there's thousands of people there to watch him do it. I mean, I remember we were able at the party to register so many Republicans just by going to his events and registering people to vote. I mean, that's lightning in a bottle. Can The Rock do the same thing? Yeah, I think The Rock can do the same thing. I think he's absolutely capable of that. Um, But I, I doubt that that would happen at this point in time. Um, I think, but, but, something, you know, but something you said though, the lightning in the bottle, I think right. a lot of it was just because of how shortened the time frame was. I mean, you had, exactly. you had, 
you had a, a recall election that just that it was no longer you know what we have right now that you've got the primaries that you've got right. uh that you've got this long process that you've got to undergo because the longer you go in this process the more you figure out what people don't know right and you stop peeling the onion back by, right and by that was the thing i mean he waited to the last possible minute did it the last possible minute did it out of left field no one expected him to do it um <clears throat> and you know all of a sudden it's off and running and with 41 or 42 other candidates by the time anyone got their feet under themselves to figure out what was going on because it was so new because they had never had a recall before and it was just you know you couldn't catch up with this time around it would be going through a process which is the primaries would be going through a process of the caucuses would be going through the process of all of the committee things that happened prior to the national conventions um you know it's it's going to be it's a different level so it would be a different challenge much different challenge but i think someone you know if the rock were to step forward i think he'd be you know he'd be a contender there's no doubt about it but i, I just I, think, I don't think he will i i mean i think people look at this and they say um why do i want the headache you know I, you're why, right. why do i want to deal with this and i don't think at this point it would be you're right he would be a contender but i don't think at this point right now he'd be able to be much of a contender. I mean, because the amount, the learning curve that he would have to have to understand the intricacies of what is happening, not just in domestically, but national politics, all the other different departments. I mean, you 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 will have your reporters like, you know, the old Carla Marinucci who just who just know know this thing like the back of their hand, who are just going to go out there and and just start, you know, it's like, okay, what's your motor voter? Uh, what do you do? You, do you believe in motor voter? Do you believe in this? Right. What What's your policy on what's happening right now in Israel. What, you know, what, what do you think about the ceasefire that we had prior to this, to October 7th? And just, I mean, just, just have to get caught up in so many areas of policy. It's just going to be bananas. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's realistic. Um, you know, and, and I just don't think the process allows for it the way things are these days. It's just a process issue too. Um, you know, it, it's going to be, I mean, the process part of it is going to be interesting if, you know, they come to the realization that, you know, maybe the president is not able to continue or, you know, they want to do the old switcheroo, uh, you know, that old political term. Yeah. <laughs> they teach that in politics 101, the old switcheroo. <laughs> um, you know, so, so you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how they do that if they want to do that on the Democrat side. Um, so it, it's a process driven thing right now. I mean, and uh, and that's what that's just the reality of the situation. So I, I don't see that happening. I think we're looking at a situation where it's either it's going to be Joe Biden unless someone figures out. And, and by the way, the one thing about Joe Biden, you keep hearing the constant drum about that. I laugh as a Republican. I laugh at is when they keep saying his negatives are so bad. Oh, wow. It's unfavorable. It's unfavorable. It's like. You know, and I and it drives me up the wall when Republicans say that because, it, you know, you never learn. His unfavorables were pretty substantial um, in 2022. Uh, and Democrats still did a whole lot better than they had any right to be or any right to do in 2022. People didn't hold them responsible for, right. for, for, the, for their unfavorability to Joe. So... You know, and and the other part is, you know, by not just Obama's weren't as bad as Joe's, but when Obama was running for re-election, I remember this in 2012. You know, the 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 thing was, well, Obama's unfavorables are pretty big, are pretty substantial at that point. Um, but you're not running against yourself; you're running against someone else, and yep. so your unfavorables may be higher than what they usually should be to be successful. But you're always running against someone else. And the question strategically is, how do you drive that person's unfavorables up so that it's the less, you know, so that people are saying, well, I'm not really thrilled. I don't know if Joe can do the job, but he's better than this one. And that's right. what they'll do. And, and, and you know, the, that's just the way, that's the st strategic part of this whole thing. So I just don't hold that as a, a reason to say the guy is not going to be able to win. I think his biggest challenge is going to be <clears throat> people seeing on a regular basis. Can he stay awake? See, 
Right. Which you see in your house when you're taking care of an elderly parent or some grandparent, you see them slipping. And, and you know, it breaks your heart, but, you know, you see them slipping. They're one minute they're there, the next minute they're not. He wanders off. You know, I mean, are we going to have an Amber Alert or, a, you know, a Senior Alert or something? Sure. I mean, that's what I think is the danger that they have at this point, is that more and more people are going to say he's not up to the job. And yeah. um, more yeah, people I mean, saying got, it. They've got plenty of alternatives. You've got Gavin, you've got uh, Kamala. <laughs> you know, they've got, they've got, you know, they've got a, I, I don't know if they've got a binder of candidates like uh, Mitt Romney you should talk about, but, you know, they've, I'm sure they've he had got a binder their, of women. I know. Matt Gates. He had a binder of women too, uh, but a different binder. Um, yeah, I, I mean, they only have two. It's Kamala or, or Gavin, and you know, realistically, I think that's part of what Gavin does this week is, again, shows he's a better choice. If that, if that's the point they've reached, and the Democrat National Committee has to make a choice. Yes, she's a black woman. Let's be honest, she's a black woman, and so that gives her major points. But that's all she is. She hasn't proven herself, A, to be someone that is capable or confident enough or just, you know, artificial intelligence enough to take the position on. And I think he, you know, he comes into that situation and people say, okay, at the last minute, we got to do the switcheroo and who, you know, who's going to have the best chance of winning. And I think, you know, most people would say at this point, it would be him, not her. Yeah. So that that's there's a lot to happen. You know, it's there's a lot to happen that um, you always say in, in, when you go put a campaign plan together. There are um, the things you control, you know, how much money you can raise, what your message is going to be, that your targeting groups, all of that kind of stuff, things you control. And then there are things you don't control. And the more you have all of the things that you can control in place and set and executing, the better your chance of dealing with those things you cannot control. Because yeah. those happen all of a sudden. This is going to be one of those campaigns. Everybody's going to be on the path. And all of a sudden, there's going to be something you can't control. It could happen in a court in Florida or New York or Georgia. It could happen on a tarmac on Air Force One um, or something like that. God forbid, but it could happen. And so there's going to be those, that kind of thing is going to happen, I think, at some point in time. And that's going to change the makeup of everything that we've talked about. Yeah, you're right. It's uh, you, uh, you learn to manage chaos and, and uh, everything else that, you know, I, it was, it, uh, Bill Christensen used to, uh, used to say all the time, it's like, you know, I had this great day laid out for me as to what was my to-do list and had everything there everything absolutely there he goes then this giant horse came up up on my desk took a dump on it and he goes and i've been spending the rest of the day just cleaning it all up <laughs> and yeah, so, this, it could be a pretty big horse in 2024 <laughs> you know, then, so tomorrow i still have that list i gotta complete but, you know, but i'm anticipating another horse coming in that's and a great way of putting it, it. yeah yeah that's a great way of putting it so.